Hello brothers and sisters, this is Christina speaking. I hope you are doing well and so today I have a message from the Lord, but before I share it, I want to confess that I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God who has come in the flesh on earth and died for our sins and was buried and rose on the third day. Hallelujah. Amen. And so before I go through this message, I want to remind you a few things. We are watching for the rapture and the tribulation. Things are happening very quickly than we think. However, you must keep in mind that nobody knows the day or the hour except God alone. And this is why the scripture tells us to watch, pray, and be ready every day because the Lord will come as a Tiffany night, which is going to be a surprise for all of us. And so we must get ready all the time. And so, uh, these last days we are living in, I hope, brothers and sisters, you are spending more time in prayer, in seeking the holy face of the Lord God, Jesus Christ, because he is the only one who is going to save you in the coming days. We are very, very close. The Lord Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. There is no other way. Without him, no one can be saved. John 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Now, brothers and sisters, have you found the Lord Jesus Christ and made him your God and Savior? If not, turn to him right now, receive and Accept him as your God and Savior. Believe and repent all your sins. Then get baptized of water and spirit before it is too late. Repentance means go and sin no more. God does not wish anyone to perish. Amen. And also in John 14, Jesus says, If you love me, you will obey me and keep my commandments. Obedience matters, brothers and sisters. In Hebrews 12, verse 14, it says, Live a holy life and pursue peace with all people. If you do these two things, you will see the face of God. Holiness matters, brothers and sisters. I am going to share with you a very important scripture from the Lord to study, pray, and seek Him for discernment and understanding. And also, He wants you to um, to examine your life these last days we are living in. Ephesians 5 verse 27, it says, that He might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. This is the bride, Rami's wife. There is only one bride. She represents the church spiritually. We are her children. We are the children of the bridegroom and the bride and so we must resemble them, which means in order to be taken in the rapture with the bride, we must not have spot, wrinkle, or blemish. Brothers and sisters, holiness matters. I hope you take this message very serious. We don't have much time left. Now I'm going to share with you the message from the Lord, which is a warning to the church. And I know only a few people are going to listen to this message. Many in the church don't like to listen to these types of the messages, which are a call to repentance because they believe that there is no need to repent in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven, which is a lie from the pits of hell. Without repentance, no one 
will enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so, take it or not, but understand that the Lord is coming for the righteous. And so, I hope you make the right decision and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ for repentance before it is too late. A few days ago, I had a short dream in which I heard a voice saying, tell them, stop selling my word. Stop selling my word. The word, the voice stopped. And so I prayed, seeking the Lord for discernment and understanding of this dream. He is what the Lord said. He said, tell my people, stop selling and buying my word. You have made it into a den of thieves. Then he gave me a scripture, Matthew 21, verse 13, which says, And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. The Lord is applying these words to the church today, brothers and sisters. It is very important to understand that the house he's talking about is not a physical house, a temple, or a place somewhere. He's talking about himself being the house of prayer. The Lord said that the church is full of hypocrites. He's talking about these first prophets, first teachers, pastors, first messengers in the church. He also talked about these criminal politicians, leaders who are selling and buying the Bible. He talked about those in the church who write the books in the name of the Lord for selling and buying. He reminded me a message he gave me a while ago, which I shared. In that message, the Lord said that the church is full of liars, fornicators, sorceries, adulteries, and thieves. And so, everybody in the church, whoever is speaking in the name of the Lord. The Lord is calling them to take time and do self-examination and check their motives. He said that many in the church today have neglected the word of God and instead focused on acquiring money and wealth drive by greed. He gave me Jeremiah 7 verse 11, which says, Has this house which is called by my name become a den of thieves in your eyes? Behold, I, even I have seen it, says the Lord. The Lord says that his house of prayer is become a den of thieves in which the rock and shelter themselves. So many are corrupt and cheating practices in buying and selling by lobbying God of his honor, brothers and sisters. He talked about Mark chapter 8, verse 36, which says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. The Lord is talking about all these first prophets, first teachers, first messengers in the church who come in his name to gain people for famous money and wealth. He said that 
no one can serve two masters, brothers and sisters. He gave me another scripture, Revelation 22, verse 18 and 19. He said, tell them, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of this life, the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Brothers and sisters, this is a warning from the Lord to the church regarding sailing and buying his word. He gave me another scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. It says, For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. The Lord said that peddling God's word is the opposite of being the aroma of Christ. People must not peddle the word of God. Don't say it. Don't be in it for the money, brothers and sisters. Preach Jesus as the only satisfying treasure. The Lord wants you to study Luke 17 and Luke 18. He said that all the money in the world cannot replace him as our treasure. He wants you to remember Lord his wife in Luke 17 and the young man, the young rich man in Luke 18. He said that they both made a bad choice and so they perished because they loved things more than they loved God. He also wants you to study Luke 12 and pay attention to verses 13 to 20. The message from the Lord about this scripture, he said that the things you possess will not give you eternal life, brothers and sisters. The things you possess will not give you eternal life. And so, the Lord said that the church is full of hypocrites, full of liars, fornicators, adulterers, thieves. This proves that the church in a whole is not the bride. Now I'm going to uh, read Malachi chapter 3. I'm going to read only verse 8, 9, and verse 5. But please take time to read all these scriptures. It is better 
if you read the whole scripture. Because this, this is how you understand the message. And so Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 says, Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, In what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 5 says, And I will come near you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit, wage earners, and widows, and orphans, and against those who turn away an alien because they do not fear me, says the Lord of the horse. I'm going to read Malachi chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3, but please read these all scriptures. Malachi chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of the hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with the healing of his wings, and you shall go out and grow fat like store feed curls. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. Brothers and sisters, read this scripture yourselves and pray and seek the Lord for discernment and understanding, brothers and sisters. You might also read Mark 12 from verse 38 to 40. I'm going to leave all these scriptures for you to study, pray, and seek the Lord for discernment and understanding. And I hope you understand this message. Whatever you are doing in the name of the Lord, you must sit down. Do a self-examination and check your motives because the judgment is coming upon those in the church who are selling and buying the word of God. Please share this message with our brothers and sisters and pray for one another, love one another, including your enemies. The Lord is coming. Get ready. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in His Son is name, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters, and God bless you.